There are no supplements that have been shown to extend lifespan in humans. Regardless, there are still some compounds that may have some anti-aging and longevity benefits that are associated with reduced mortality risk. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at this one specific compound called spermidine and how it is associated with reduced mortality in humans. Do it! So spermidine has become quite popular over the past few years, mostly because of this particular study, in my opinion, that was published in 2018, which talks about how spermidine intake is linked to lower all-cause mortality. And it's actually quite a long-term study, 1995 until 2015, among 829 participants between the ages of 45 and 84. It is, of course, an epidemiology study, a food questionnaire study, of assessing their dietary spermidine intake and their rate of mortality. They divided these people into three tertiles of spermidine intake. So low spermidine intake was less than 9 milligrams per day. The high spermidine intake was above 11 milligrams per day. And the normal spermidine intake was between 9 and 11 milligrams per day. And if you can see, then the low tertile intake was 171 deaths. The normal tertile or normal spermidine intake or moderate spermidine intake was 103 deaths and the high spermidine intake was only 67 uh, deaths. Now that's quite a significant difference based on just the uh, spermidine intake where the other factors were like controlled for. So what is spermidine? Spermidine is a polyamine. You can get it from foods. Your body can also produce it, but uh, there are multiple, let's say, mechanisms or health benefits of spermidine that uh, we know about. But one of the main theoretical reasons why spermidine may have these health benefits have to do with the induction of autophagy or the cell recycling process and there have been yeah like multiple studies showing how spermidine can regulate the process of autophagy another 2022 study another like a uh, questionnaire based study unfortunately did look at also spermidine intakes di dietary spermidine intake and all cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality and they too found that higher intake of dietary spermidine was associated with decreased risk of cardiovascular disease and all cause mortality Spermidine derived from vegetables, cereals, legumes, nuts, and cheese was associated with reduced cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. And the 2017 study, dietary spermidine for lowering high blood pressure. In humans, high dietary spermidine intake correlates with reduced blood pressure and decreased risk of cardiovascular disease and related death. Wait a minute. So it does appear that multiple studies, human studies, do show that spermidine intake from dietary sources is associated with some cardioprotective effects, reduced blood pressure, reduced cardiovascular disease mortality, and potentially reduced all-cause mortality as well. Of course, these are all epidemiology studies, which means that they're not controlled for. Like, they're qu food questionnaire-based studies where people just report to the uh, scientists what foods they eat. The higher spermidine intake from dietary resources such as legumes, nuts, seeds, vegetables, and cheese even, that is associated with these health benefits and uh, the reduction in all-cause mortality. Some of those foods are associated with healthier lifestyle habits overall. Like if people eat more vegetables, they eat more plant-based foods, etc., then uh, they are more likely to also follow some other healthy lifestyle habits like regular exercise, not overeating, reducing their calorie intake, which are all also associated with uh, reduced risk of uh, heart disease as well as reduced risk of of, uh, mortality. You can get spermidine from cheese as well, which generally isn't actually considered like a heart healthy or like a pro longevity food. But uh, you can also get spermidine from mushrooms as well as wheat germ and spirulina and chlorella. You can get spermidine from quite a wide variety of uh, or wide range of foods, and not all of those foods have the healthy user bias attached to them. Of course, a lot of them do, like broccoli and vegetables, but the amount of spermidine in those foods is relatively small compared to something like wheat germ, uh, cheese, or uh, mushrooms. So what we do know is that dietary spermidine intake may be beneficial for longevity and it may reduce the risk of all-cause mortality and whether or not the, those effects are caused by the spermidine specifically in those foods or because of the other let's say, correlations with the specific foods that contain spermidine, such as uh, lower calorie intake and healthier lifestyle. But it looks like you do want to get at least 11 milligrams of spermidine a day for the health benefits. Over these past two years, many different companies have also come out with their own spermidine supplements now because of those health associations and because of the promise of being an anti-aging compound and promise of being an autophagy regulator, etc. And the spermidine supplements, at least based on this new study again, 2023 April, 
that uh, the spermidine supplements, even at high doses, may not be enough to cause like a significant rise in your actual spermidine levels. And the conclusion is that this study's results suggest that dietary spermidine is pre-systematically converted into spermine, which then enters systemic circulation. Presumably, the in vitro and clinical effects of spermidine are at least in part attributable to its metabolite spermine. It is rather unlikely that spermidine supplements with doses less than 15 milligrams a day exert any short-term effects. So it might be that there is something completely different happening with dietary spermidine uh, compared to spermidine supplementation. Son of a and a lot of the other papers talking about the longevity and like anti-aging effects of spermidine, they're actually, you know, these authors, they might have some conflicts of interest because these uh, authors of these, uh, <laughs> of these papers are actually, they hold equity in these like longevity labs. I don't know exactly what these longevity labs is, but I would presume they might sell like some spermidine supplements. <laughs> So, and this Longevity Labs, yes, they do sell Spermid in Life, which is a longevity supplement. And Dr. Frank Medeo is one of the authors of these uh, papers that talks about the potential anti-aging and longevity benefits of spermidine as a supplement. It's a trap. What I'm saying is that we don't know if spermidine supplementation has these longevity benefits. I personally am, let's say, inclined to think that it might have some benefits, but the issue is that there's not enough uh, evidence to suggest that uh, the spermidine supplements have the same longevity and health benefits as the dietary spermidine intake, which we know based on the other previous epidemiology studies that I talked about in the beginning of this video. Based on our current evidence and based on our current knowledge, then uh, dietary and supplemental spermidine are completely different and uh, the health and longevity benefits come from dietary spermidine intake, which uh, you get from wheat germs, spirulina, chlorella, and uh, things like mushrooms, vegetables, nuts, legumes, and the uh, cheese. But regardless, I'm definitely going to pay attention more to spermidine as a supplement and hopefully we will get some future studies, more human clinical studies on spermidine supplementation. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.